In this video, you will learn how to bulk import data into Zapier workflows. This is a really cool trick for tools that don't have an import function. So as long as there is a Zapier action to add something to that service, you can do a bulk import. So say you were using an email marketing system and you needed to get a list of names and email addresses into that software and they don't have an import, but you look up the app in Zapier and there's an option to add a contact, then you can essentially force Zapier to run that workflow lots of times, uh, effectively creating an import into that service. I'm Jimmy from jimmyrose.me and if you'd like to learn more about how to use Zapier in cool ways and become more productive through automation and time management, please hit that subscribe button below. Now for the first example, we're going to use Content Snare. If you're not familiar with Content Snare, it's an app that allows you to request information from people. So typically your clients, maybe to get started on working with them, you need to collect a bunch of files and information. So think of it like you're sending a client a form that is specific for them. They can put different information into it and you can collaborate with them on that information. Uh, they can upload things uh, to that form, but that form is specific to them. Uh, right now, if you needed to send that same form to say 20 people, you can't actually do that with an import inside of Content Snare, but you can do it with Zapier using the method you're about to learn. So let's dig in and have a look. Here I am on the Zapier page for Content Snare. And so this is where we can have a look to see uh, what is possible to import with uh, Zapier and Content Snare. So I'm gonna have a look down the bottom here and click over to Actions. So you can see here we can create a request or we can create a client. So using the system you're about to learn, that means you could bulk import requests or clients. So you're just looking for things that you can create here essentially. So I've got a project management system called ClickUp, same deal. Scroll down to the bottom, click over to actions. So if you like, you could import folders, you could uh, import checklists, like any of this can essentially be imported with the workflow you're about to learn. And finally, uh, Rebrandly is a link shortener that I use and I've had to use this exact workflow with Rebrandly before because they don't have an import for um, adding new uh, short links. So um, they have an action here for creating branded links um, and you'll see a step-by-step -step workflow of this later on in this video. So that's how you can see uh, what's possible. Now let's actually go and create the workflow. So this is the first screen you should see when you log into Zapier. I'm just gonna hit that make a zap button to start creating a workflow. Now normally you start with a trigger, but in this case we actually need to go and work out what information we're going to import. So I'm gonna skip straight down to the action here. We'll search for content snare and choose that create a request action. Select your account as you normally do when you are creating zaps. And now this is where we try and work out what information we're going to need to import. Now at this point, let's go and create a new Google Doc. I'm just gonna call it uh, temp content snare import and open those side by side. So now just pretend you're creating a request in this zap. So normally you'd be mapping some information through from whatever the trigger is. We haven't created the trigger yet, but we will be creating it based on this spreadsheet. So we're just gonna step through all the fields here. So we have the name of the request. So I'm just gonna write that as a column name. The folder, we don't really care about in this case. The request template is just the form we're sending to that person. So in this case, we're gonna send the same form to everybody. So we don't need to have that in the spreadsheet. I'm just gonna choose it directly from here. Uh, we need to know the person we're going to send it to. So we'll go email. Uh, then we've got the full name of the person. So we'll write that in. Uh, their company name as well. And let's just say we don't care about the rest. We don't need a due date uh, or any of these things. I'm just gonna choose a status of published. So this is obviously going to look different depending on which app you are trying to import to. You know, not every single app is gonna have a status and a request template, but that's why it's good to just step through this one at a time and plan out what you think you're going to need to import over here in the spreadsheet. So let's just go ahead and create a, an example to import. So maybe we've got an example request here. It's gonna to go to test at example.com. It's going to test guy uh, and test company. 
Now what we can do is go back up to the trigger and we're going to use Google Sheets and tell it to import this row for us. The trigger is going to be whenever a new spreadsheet row is added. Select your account. Given that we just created that spreadsheet, it should be showing at the top. Otherwise you can search for it. Just gonna use that first sheet down there you can see. And it's gonna to ask to test and it should pull in that one we just created. Perfect. So now what we can do is actually map that data directly into the trigger. So if we go back down to this section, we need the request name. There it is. And we don't care about the folder. The email we're gonna send it to is there and the full name and the company name. And now everything should be filled out in this workflow. So if we go to continue. Now, before we actually test this, uh, I've just opened uh, Content Snare here on the side, which is our test account. So I'm gonna scroll down now here and go to continue. We're gonna go ahead and run that test. It says a test request was sent to Content Scenario. So there's that one we're looking for, example request. I'm just gonna reload that and run a search. So there we go. And it was created for test company, which you can see here. So it looks like that has worked. It's really important to get that single one working first before we do the rest. Once you're happy with that, we can move on. The first thing to do is to turn the zap on here. It's probably a good idea to give it a name. I'm gonna call this one temp so I know to delete it later. And then the rest of this actually just happens in the spreadsheet itself. Now that this is turned on, every single time a row is added to this sheet, it's gonna go ahead and create that request in content snare. So essentially all we have to do to bulk import is paste in a bunch of rows here and it's gonna go ahead and run. The way I like to do this is actually create a new tab. Just gonna copy the exact same information over here and just get this ready because this sheet is the one that's going to trigger the import. I don't wanna be typing things in manually here because if I've started typing in this column and this column and then the workflow runs, it's gonna run with just those two columns, right? So we wanna make sure all of it gets added at the same time. So I like to just go and do it in another sheet here and then copy it all back into that first one. So I'm just gonna create some dummy data. So you can see it's very original data here. I've literally just gone uh, sequential numbers, one, two, three, four, uh, in the name, the email, the person's name and the company name. Once that's all ready to go, you can just go ahead and copy that and dump it into this sheet. Now this is an instant zap, meaning it should work as soon as you paste the data in there. There might be a small delay, but if we head over to Content Snare now, now I'm gonna search for test company. You can see here we've got test company one, two, three, and four. So it looks like it's imported those four different requests. So that is it. That is the entire process to bulk import data into another service with Zapier. One potential issue you might run into is if you do a lot of these at once, like let's say you paste in say uh, 200 requests in this case, Zapier might actually send you an email and ask if you meant to do that. It's kind of a protection mechanism in case you didn't actually mean to run an automation hundreds of times. If that happens, Zappy will just send you an email. It might look something like this. So it'll say we're holding tasks um, for whatever Zap it is. Um, all you have to do is click through to this link here and it will take you to a task history page where you can just confirm that you want to run all of those uh, import tasks. Now let's run through one more example just so you can see this all in action again. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new workflow. Again, I'm gonna call it temp so I know to delete it later. So rebrandly is a link shortener that um, I use. Again, we'll go down to the action. We're gonna search for rebrandly. Create the branded link and continue. Choose my account. And I'll quickly just show you rebrandly here as well. 
So if you're not familiar with link shortening, it's pretty simple. It's just saying uh, we want to create a short link for let's say google.com and it's putting it on our domain and creating a, what, what they call a slash tag, so a short URL. So let's say here we have jimmyrose.co slash g that becomes a link that redirects to google.com. So there's only really a couple of parts to this that we need to import. It's the destination URL, the slash tag, and the domain that we want it on. So I'm gonna move that out of the way, go back to rebrandly. Uh, and in this case, you can see we're gonna need that destination URL and the slash tag. The domain, we're just gonna leave it on the same one every time. So there was that jimmyrose.co one that you just saw. We can go ahead and create that new spreadsheet. And just like before, I will call it attempt so I know to delete it later. We're gonna need a destination URL. I'll just call it URL and slash tag. And we'll create that first one. So maybe it is going to be to google.com and we want the slash tag to be G. Go back up, create the trigger with Google Sheets. Trigger on a new spreadsheet row. Select our account again. We're gonna test and pull in that Google G. Looks like it's worked. Jump back down to that action and map in that information from the import. So the destination URL is google.com and the slash tag is G. Doesn't look like there are any other required fields or any other fields we care about right now. I mean, you know, if you wanted to import notes, you would just put another notes column here and then map that directly into there. Same with title and all the rest. So that's done. If we go to continue, we can run that test. Ah, and you can see this here is why we run a test. So it's telling me that the link needs to have a HTTP in front of it. So if we go back to that sheet, we gotta make sure we put HTTPS colon in front of it. So now let's jump back up here. Now that's probably not going to work because it's already pulled in that row. Let's have a look. Oh no, look at that, it worked. So if we go continue again, now we're gonna jump back down here, skip through all these steps and test it. There we go, looks like it's worked. Open up rebrandly again. And there you go, there's the URL we've just created. So now if I go to uh, jimmyrose.me slash g, sorry, dot co, that should redirect to Google. All right, so now that we know that's working, we can go ahead and go through the same process as before, create that new sheet, and maybe we've got a bunch of different links that we want to create. So we're gonna go with some basic ones, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and of course, making sure we have that HTTPS on the front now that we know that that is a requirement from Rebrandly. Make sure that zap is turned on over here. Definitely don't forget that bit. Uh, and then we're gonna copy those over into that sheet and just wait for a little bit. Sometimes you might have to wait a little bit longer than others. The way you can tell if the workflow has already run is this task history link here. So if you click that, it'll take you to all the times this thing has run, this temp rebrandly uh, one, and you can see that this hasn't run yet. So I know that it isn't something that I've done wrong, it just hasn't actually run the workflow yet. All right, looks like I had to wait a little while for that one, but if we have a look at Rebrandly, we can see those three links have come in. And if I refresh this task history page, we should see those tasks. There we go. You can see it's run three times and that's gonna be on those three links. And that's it for this video. This bulk import trick with Zapier is one of the most handy I guess tricks to know uh, with Zapier. It really opens up your abilities of what you're able to do. When you are using a tool and there's no import and you know how to do this, you look up that app in Zapier and you find it's there and they've got an option to like add a contact or add an invoice or something like that. Then suddenly with this workflow, you can just go ahead and import all of the things you need into that 
tool. It comes in handy for me all the time, and I hope uh, it comes in handy for you in the future. Uh, that's it. I've been Jimmy from jimmyrose.me and Content Snare. Uh, if you would like to learn to become more productive through automation, time management, and cool software, and getting better with Zapier uh, and other automation tools, hit that subscribe button below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.